Welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be game four between Zeke and DeWalt. And at this stage, I think both players, maybe even after the first game, wondering if they played them all in a row. But it seems to me like fatigue is setting in. Upper left-hand corner, you've got DeWalt starting as the gray Protoss. Bottom right-hand corner, we have Zeke as the orange Zerg. It's also possible that Zeke's like, do I really want to try to take down DeWalt in that many? Like, I have to win that many games. Is it really going to happen? Or maybe even losing the first two matches, he's like, let me just go ahead and do weird stuff. We'll get, I'll get out of the set, and we'll move on to set four. And if I can get up early there, we'll continue to fight this out. But in the meantime, DeWalt, showing, both players showing some shenanigans stuff. We had the middle hatchery, the middle of the map taken twice, which we have not yet seen in all of these matches. Pylon on the front looks like DeWalt's going to scout bottom left-hand corner first. Zeke scouting bottom left-hand as well. Wondering if Zeke looks like never mind. It is going to be an Overlord first build. I desperately want to see what happens with the Nine Hatch, Zergling Flood, cross position on Fighting Spirit Mania now. Hopefully, uh, it'll come up at some point. But as it stands in the room, yeah, I think this is. I think this is just turning into a uh, lackadaisical practice for both these guys. Which is good. I think it'll put him in good shape moving into... Especially for BSL 14. Looks like... This is going to be a 12 hatch from Zeke. The probe not quite going to be in time to disrupt it. He's going to wander up and see it. It's kind of that it's at the uh, lower digest digestion. The lower gestation. That's the word I'm looking for. The lower gestation point for the hatchery. So he knows that it is... And Zeke upon went forge first... Or sorry, DeWalt went Forge first, so he's potentially going to try to go for that 12th cannon. And Zeke is boxed out from the two pylons. So to try to counter this, is he going to pull the... So he's got the spawning pool online. He has pulled drones. Did the tr nice drone drill. Didn't even get to see it. Another nice drone drill, as expected of Zeke. Oh, not quite able to get through, but is able to attack through the line here. Gets the drone kill. Cannon's now being attacked. Nice defense. Continuing to... If you can do it... Just... Wow. Zeke's really got this down. Cannon being more on the opposite side. But it only takes two drones. Yeah. To go ahead and finish that out. So that's cancellation of resources. So now this hurts for DeWalt. So he lost a probe. He's going to lose two pylons. Nexus is coming online. He might have to worry about some Zerglings... Because here's the thing, Zeke doesn't need to dedicate these Zerglings to the pylons, the natural expansion. He can just send those Zerglings right to the front door. DeWalt is opting for a Nexus instead. He is dropping his own cannon behind this. So now where do the Zerglings go? Single drone is trapped back here, so he's going to go ahead and attack in the midst of this. The Zerglings are headed towards the front. And with the cross spawn... Oh, I forgot about this. That Zeke still has not scouted his opponent's base. Yeah, this drone's just sitting... It was just chilling at the 6 o'clock instead. After all that. So, I take it back. Zergling's not going to be able to get there. But you can see where if there were four Zerglings... Yeah, just as the cannon was online, it would be, like, close, right? That's, that's my thought here. <laughs> uh, anyway. Pylon being worked on by the Zerglings. DeWalt... Investing a lot of minerals early on. And as things are restabilizing, Zeke about even on the worker count. So everything's testing that front door. Nexus just now coming online for DeWalt. He does have that assimilator morphing in. He's also going to find this third hatch right here at the 6 o'clock location. Is Zergling going to... Oh, he's going to go for a cannon. <laughs> going to do it again. So from Zeke's point of view, he doesn't... If this Zergling moves left, he can save this hatchery. Oh, okay, he's got it spotted. Dewalt losing a, another handful of minerals. Oops. It's 33 minerals for the, the cancellation, but Zeke, so the third base is scouted, though. <laughs> Looks like it is going to be three hatch layer. Overlord hanging out over that natural expansion. I'm wondering if it's going to go ahead and make the run all the way in just to see what's going on. It looks like this time we are seeing at least a, a cybernetic score. I assume we're going to see a Stargate for something somewhat typical from DeWalt. I like the attempt 
of the cannon. I haven't seen that yet either, of a late game probe going for cannons at the at the third. Actually, with the zealot as a distraction at another location, I could see that actually playing out. Overlord meandering way up. So, as things stand, Dewalt all of a sudden up twenty eight probes to twenty three workers. Spire is on the way. Stargate is going to finish in time. Should force some cannons in the main and natural expansion. Second gas. So are we going to see Maelstrom? Or I actually still want to see DeWalt going for that early Corsair. The, the error build, I would say. Maybe double Stargate. Plus one weapons on Stargate. Maintaining map control. We are seeing plus one weapons here. I think the Overlord knows that that's plus one weapons. That Overlord's not... This is the this was the sacrificial build. Zeki spreading zerglings absolutely everywhere. Plopping down a fourth hatchery and a hydralis then. So going more towards the come at me bro style. What I do like with this initial build is, is if you can get the five mutalisks out and just a single pair of scourge can oftentimes take down that first corsair and maintain map control for a good period of time. Looks like we are seeing the double stargate. With plus one weapons, so Devault not asking politely for air control. Plus one weapons about halfway finished. The Zealots marching out, taking that first circling rather than going for the near side overlord. Devault gonna scout forward. Hydral speed being upgraded. It looks like overlord speed being morphed before we're seeing any sort of mutilisk. Corsair tapping the Overlord on the front. I think sees that Hydralis then, knows that it's the four build. And so it looks like there were some Scourge. Just not in the typical position. But Zeki needs to continue to build those Scourge. And it's critical that he takes this first Corsair out. Because there are going to be a lot of Corsairs very shortly behind this. DeWalt doing a great job of microwing. Zeki going for the cutoff route. But I think DeWalt, yeah, is going to be able to pocket back. No preventative cannons as of yet. So a single preventative cannon in the main, but the preventative cannon is sitting a little forward with these Corsair. Which makes sense considering if you get that plus one weapons and more Corsair, you don't need as many cannons in that back end defensive line. Oh, evolution chambers down. Get that plus one weapons. The Scourge now, yeah, walking up to scout. They need to avoid that cannon though. And are they going to go all the way across? So Zeki didn't peek all the way. Still might have an idea based on how many Corsair are already out. I think he's got to have a feel for this. Building a lot of Hydralisks. Yeah, and might want to pocket up. Maybe even get a Sunken Colony down at these various locations. The Zealots moving out. The Zerglings look like they want to go for a run-by. Oh, no. Initially thinking about a run-by, but then upon seeing... That, uh, I don't know, seeing that cannon, deciding, nope, returning home. An okay Sim City here. The Zealots initially marching out, then coming back. The Corsair fleet walking around. Plus one weapons is here. These Corsair can chew through Overlords rapidly. The Hydralis trying to get position on them. Before they're able to even touch an Overlord. Zealots continuing to march forward. They have plus one weapons. And here's the Gateway Flood as the follow-up. And Zeki doing a good job of marching out, not running into the Zealots. Well, now running into the Zealots. They don't have Leg Speed, so getting some nice damage. Where's Leg Speed? Did he skip it all together? Skipped it all together. And now Zeki with a bunch of Hydralis grouping up on the front door. The Corsair is swinging around. I think they want to make shots here at the 6 o'clock location. They still might be able to get some Overlords in the midst of that. No Overlord. So there is Overlord speed, but the Overlord not here yet to help deal with the Stark Templar. Now they are grouping up and wiping him out. Some additional cannons being plopped down. The Corsair is looking for something, not finding anything yet. So Zeki with a nice defense. Level 1 armor. I like that these Zealots are kind of pocketed back here just in case if the Hydralis opt to dive in. The Zalts can swing down and maybe go for a cutoff route. Corsair's parked near that 3 o'clock location. So yeah, now moving in. Trying to get that pincer attack between these two attack forces. 
Ziki going ahead and backing out now that he got damage on both. They now have Zealot Leg Speed. Corsair should be able to take out that Overlord without too much trouble. It's almost like a... It's weird. It's how it's interesting how they're inversion points in various matchups. Oftentimes it's the Zerg trying to pick off the Observer, but this time it's like the Corsair picking off the Overlord overhead. High Templar taking a little bit of free damage from that Zergling behind all of this. And Hydralis now marching midfield. So you got Hydras to the north, Hydras to the south. Natural expansion somewhat exposed. There are Lurkers there. One thing about this build is that does delay... What kind of nice little shade effect that happens off the... You can see the, like, bright... Is it just a beam of light? Is that really all the Corsairs are, like, Zerg are weak to light? We will irradiate them with... Ziki in the red currently. Decent dodge out of that side storm, but still ate uh, a chunk of damage. A small group of Hydalists on the front looking to cut off reinforcements, and it looks like they are going to get a High Templar, so well worth their while. But these Lurkers, without the Observer support and with that decent spread... They're going to chew through those Zealots rather rapidly. The Zergling's holding them in position. Enough Zealots where they're still punching through. The Corsairs being focused, fired, and picked off. Still able to get Overlord kills. And this is enough Zealots where they're able to just walk. Too many Zealots, too few Lurkers. So they're still able to punch through. Ziki having a lot of economic disruptions. Some Zealots marching into the main. Looks like those Hydra's also getting pinned to that upper corner as well. And the Corsairs... Yeah, just chewing through Overlords overhead. Hydalus regrouping. It looks like these are reinforcements from the 6 o'clock location. Trying to deal with the rest of these Zealots. But Dwalt in a nice position to go ahead and grab his third. Has taken out a lot of Overlords. Has done a lot of damage otherwise. Plus one Carapace. Plus one Weapons. Plus one Carapace on the way. But So Ziki up to 40 drones. Grabbing his fourth. He's in a decent supply position. Managed to get a Lurker on the front. Observer's on the way for DeWalt. He's got a big gateway count. Getting Dragoon range. Help deal with those Lurkers. He's going to grab his third at the 9 o'clock. Right now, not dropping any defense. So just assuming that Ziki is not going to scout and pounce on it. Or if he did, that he would be able to, I don't know, size storm his way up to it. Ziki going for a soft contain, still assuming he's in a two-base scenario, potentially, or maybe just happy to grab the gateway units, and then if he discovers this, he can just go ahead and punch through at leisure. Ziki sitting at, what is this? Six hatcheries? Seven hatcheries? Shortly? The Zelt's marching up to th three o'clock. It's going to be six hatcheries, because this hatchery's not going to long be long for life. It's going to... Is he going to... Yeah, okay, there's the cancellation. Hydalus making their way back across to try to engage that. And while that's happening, the Lurker's being assailed on the front. This is, I love DeWalt's ability to do this. He's like, okay, attack at 3 o'clock, move the Hydralis that direction. We'll clear up the front with the Observer and the Dragoons. And then we'll just kind of walk forward. Ziki with, still looking for those Corsair. Been enough of a thorn in his side that he's like, I want to go ahead and take them out of the match now. They're camped over that natural expansion. The Zelt's marching to the upper right, trying to invite the Hydralisks out of position while DeWalt is grouping up for potentially an attack on the 6 o'clock. I think he was looking to see whether Ziki took the bottom left-hand corner first. Some Hydralisks going to lose their lives in the middle of the map and not really get much else from S.H.I.E.L.D. But at least that army has been spotted from Ziki to potentially respond. DeWalt going to go ahead and back off. Probe transferring and grabbing that third gas. In the midst of all of that, plus one weapons being upgraded for the Zerglings. And Ziki just going ahead and sitting back in Macring. Trying to get that third base up. And a little bit of a defensive position. The Zealots wandering in, but they've got no Observer to help. So they're going to go ahead and have to back off. And the Scourge just kind of sitting around. They're like, man, I want my chance to shine. Critically with this, was Ziki is opting not to send Overlords... With the Hydralis grouping. Doesn't look like Dark Templar are going to be able to be in this grouping to really capitalize on that. But he's going ahead and checking the bottom left. Maybe going to march up and find that 9 o'clock. This is enough cannons and that should buy enough time. Yeah, so two Zealots to blockade the ramp. Some cannons. He knows DeWalt's taking this base. 
Also, t DeWalt also taking that 12 o'clock. Probe's coming off the line to defend this, to buy more time. So two cannons down. The rest of that army is flooding in from the north. And there's the Psy Storm. Plus the Dragoons should be able to halt this easily. Oof, blanketing Psy Storm. So nothing there for Zeki. Got three cannons, not a lot else. Handful of probes. But DeWalt, noticing that army out of position, just going to go ahead and grab his 12 o'clock base to go up four bases. Well, I guess technically it's going to be four bases to four, but usually that puts... If you can be even on bases, that usually puts Protoss ahead. Speaking of ahead, DeWalt with a huge supply lead. Absolutely massive. Hive Tech is on the way for Zeki. But DeWalt's in a great situation where he's going to hit 200 supply. He's going to be mining... He's got the double forge. Is this the triple forge? No, just double forge in the background. Zeki taking more shots here at the 9 o'clock base. Was also... I think going to move... I'm not sure if he scouted that 12 o'clock base or not. Was moving troops up that direction, but... The Lurkers and Zerglings getting obliterated there. The Overlord's getting taken out as well. And this, I think this is, again, a fatigue factor for Zeki. Or a distractionary factor where he's trying to engage at too many points at once. Was trying to micro this army and ended up losing what was there at the 12 o'clock. Trying to march up is going to, upon that cannon, I think realizes that base is in position. The Lurker somehow managing to get to that back line. More Overlords getting taken out. And DeWalt continuing to defend and continuing to grow is going to have a considerable upgrade lead. Well, I actually, maybe not. Level 2 Carapace is on line for Zeki here. But you can just see he's just got kind of this force in the middle of the map of just swatting down these attacks from Zeki at the 12 o'clock and 9 o'clock. Zeki now trying to push up. Forces way up to the 12 o'clock location. Some High Templar are there to go ahead and storm and hold that. And while this is happening, he's like, okay, you're going to attack there. You're going to attack there. I've got a supply lead. Well, I don't know that he knows he has a supply lead, but I think he's got to assume at this stage. Going to go ahead and engage and press the 6 o'clock base. That is drawing the troops. Well, looks like a dream got moved out of position. Some lurkers just holding the low ground. Well, it's like, if I can't attack that base, I might as well contain you. Psystorm being dropped on top of the Dragoon to take care of the Zergling. Some World War One tactics here. The Lurker is just getting obliterated. So Zeki finding army engagements, but not able to really get in a position to do anything about it. And I think realizing that, okay, yeah, DeWalt's got these bases. He's got the supply lead. He's got upgrades rolling. I'm not going to be able... I'm just losing... It just felt like, yeah, he was kind of losing army cohesion here and there. So just calling the match there. DeWalt takes set three. And one more set. It's an official victory. I'm wondering if they played them out. We'll see once we look into the replays from here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.